Hello and welcome back to the Let's Create series where we are working on our Xamarin app. This is a cross-platform app between Android and iOS. We're going to continue where we left off in the last episode and we're going to continue our project setup and we're going to work on the navigation service. So let's get into it. Let's go ahead and create our services. So we need a, a navigation service which is going to give us a way to navigate between the page models. So we can add a new folder and we can name this navigation. And then we we're going to want to add an, an interface. So you can add class and make this an interface and we will name it iNavigation Service. And then we're going to want to add an, a regular class and this is going to be navigation service which is the implementation of the interface so navigation service so now we have a public class we'll go ahead and make it public public class navigation service and it needs to implement i navigation service and i navigation service is going to be need to be a public interface and we need a couple methods, ma mainly only two. We need a, um, a task, which is the return type. And that's going to be navigate to async. And this will take in a T page model base. And then we will take in uh, an object for navigation data, which will be optional. So we will set it to default to null. And then an optional Boolean to set root. And we'll default this to false. And this will let us, uh, when, we, when we navigate forward or we do like a, you know, a push on the navigation stack, we may want to clear the navigation stack after we push. And so that we'll set that optional parameter that we can deal with later. And we also want a go back async, so a way to pop the navigation stack. So we'll say task as the return type again and we'll just say go back async and I don't think this one's gonna need any type of parameters so we can just leave that one empty and let's go ahead and add some summaries to these so the navigate to async summary will be um, basically a navigation method uh, to uh, push onto the view the navigation stack And then our go back is just the opposite. So a navigation method to pop off of the navigation stack. Okay, and then we need to provide those implementations for each of those methods. So we can go back to the navigation service and we should get like a, an, a red line, an error. And if we just uh, do the quick fix, it'll say implement interface. and It'll bring in those two methods. So navigate, navigation services go back async is pretty easy. All we need to do is grab the navigation from the current page and just pop async. So we can just return that. So we'll say return app.current.mainpage.navigation.pop async. And that's easy enough. Uh, now the navigate to is going to be a little more complicated. And so we need to check a couple things. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create the page and we created a method inside page model locator that could do that for us. Uh, and all we need to do is simply provide that T page model base. And so we can do that by saying uh, var page equals page model locator dot create page for. And all this is looking for is a type of page model. And so we could just say type of and T page model base. And that'll create the page for us and it will set the binding context. And then we want to check to see if set root is true. So if set root, then we're just going to set this to the, to the main page. And so we will just say app.current.main page equals new. And this can be uh, just a new navigation page. And its root page will be the page we just created. And then we can go ahead and bring in Xamarin Forms. Otherwise, so if not set root, we want to make sure we have a navigation page. So we can say if app 
dot current dot main page is a navigation page and we'll just call it nav page is fine um, then we will just push onto that nav page so we'll say uh, return nav page dot push async and we'll just push the page otherwise we want to set a navigation page to the main page so we can say else and then we'll say app.current.mainpage equals new navigation page. And we will just set this as root, so page. And then at the very end, uh, we'll just return task.completed task. And that just lets us know, hey, it, you know, if we set the main page, that's not an asynchronous operation. So go ahead and just return completed task. Otherwise, if we pushed, then that, that itself is a task. And so go ahead and return that. So that should take care of the navigate to async and the go back async. So now we want a way to uh, provide some uh, post construction initialization. And so we can do that in page model base. We'll go back to page model base. And we're going to make a virtual method. So it doesn't have to be overridden, but it, it could be. And we could just say uh, public. So I guess we'll put it above our, pri our protected method. So we can say public virtual task as the return type, and then we sh should import threading that task. Uh, public virtual task initialize async, and this will take in an object for navigation data. And this is kind of like the DTO or the data transfer object that we could pass between page models. And we could set this to just be a default to null so that it's not required. And all we're going to do here is just return task.completed task. And in each of the children page models, we can optionally do something to this, but we don't need to. And so now in navigation service, we'll come back. And you notice we passed in this navigation data, uh, but we're not doing anything with it. And so what we can do is, um, you know, before the return task.completed task, we can check to see if page.bindingContext, so if page.bindingContext is a page model base, and we can uh, just give it a variable name here, so page model base, and then we can just return, we can just return PM base dot initialize async, and we can pass in navigation data, which could be null, and, and that's no big deal. So then we end up with a little problem. So we'll never make it down to here if we push onto the navigation stack because we're just going to return the task of pushing onto the navigation stack. And so instead what we can do is, is make this method a an asynchronous method, which then won't take any return. But then what we can do is we can await these things. So we can just await navpage.push and then we can await pmbase.initialize async and then we don't have to return anything. And so that'll take care of that. That gives us post construction initialization, which is outstanding. And when we navigate to new page models, uh, it will automatically call that so we can pass navigation data as data transfer objects. And so that takes care of that. So I'm going to save everything and we can jump over to our login page. So our login page, all we need to do is provide some kind of way to first of all, determine it is the login page and another thing we need to do is be able to navigate forward to something. And so what we can do is take this label that we already have and we can just rename it to say login page is fine. And we can even go up here into the content page attribute section and we can provide a title and this can just be login. And so this will show up in that top navigation bar. It'll say login. Then we have this uh, label that says login page. We don't want it to have vertical options, center and expand. We'll just leave it the way it is. And then we're going to create a button. So we can just under that label say button text equals just sign in is fine and command. So when they tap it, so command is binding and this will go back to the binding context, which is the login page model. And we can say binding. Sign, uh, sign in command is fine. So sign in command. Okay, and so now that we have that, we can jump back to the login page model and we need to create the sign in command to handle the tap. So we can jump in here and we could say, uh, 
private I command, which is system.windows.input. Um, I command, and this will just be sign in command. And then we'll make a public variant, which is something we can bind to. So public I command, sign in command. And then all we're going to do is, is on get, we're just going to return the sign in command, the private version. And then on set, we're going to use our set property method. And we'll reference that sign in command private member and we'll pass in value. And so then in the initialization or even better in the, in the constructor, and we're going to do this in the constructor because this only needs to be the sign in command only needs to be set one time. And so initialization will happen every time. Uh, well, you can call it multiple times, but the constructor is only on creation of the page model. And so what we'll do is we'll say public login page model. And in here, we can go ahead and set our sign in command. So we'll say sign in command equals new command. And this will come from Xamarin forms. And we'll give it an action and we'll say on sign in action. Now this method doesn't exist, so you can use the quick fix and that will generate the method below our constructor and we can add some kind of functionality here. And what we want to do is navigate to the dashboard page model and we don't have a way to do that currently. We have our navigation service, uh, but we don't, we don't have a way to resolve that navigation service. Well, that's where IOC comes in. So we have tiny IOC and that handles registering services and then resolving them as dependencies. And so we can use that here. So we can just simply say I navigation service and just give it a name. Navigation service is fine. And then you get, you need to import that actual service. And now we can save that at class level. So navigation service equals navigation service. Just make sure there's some kind of difference. So I used an underscore and then when we do a quick fix, it will bring in this uh, private member of an iNavigation service. And our inversion of control will handle the dependency injection here. So we don't need to worry about it, but we can use it. And that's the benefit here. So now we can just say navigation service dot navigate to async. We just provide the type of the view model that we want to navigate to. And so that's dashboard page model and any optional parameters we want to send. And we don't need to send anything. So we'll just leave it empty and uh, use a semicolon and that should take care of that. The very last thing we want to do before we test this is make sure our page model locator has the registrations that we need and we don't. So we need to register our pages and page models and we also need to register our services. So registering the services is pretty simple. We can just go under the regis register services comment and we can just use our container directly and say container dot register. And this will take the interface name and the implementation name. So I navigation service, comma navigation service. And then we need to import navigation and that will register the I navigation service. The other thing we need to do is register the pages to their page models. And so we can do that by making a private static method. We can just do that here at the bottom. We can just say static void register. And this will take in a page model and a page. So we can say T page model and T page. And then we can just put some restrictions on it. So we can say where T page model extends from page model base and where T page extends from a Xamarin forms page. And so that puts restrictions on these type parameters. And then we can just register these to our lookup table. So view lookup as well as the container and view lookup. We're going to do um, a, a page model and then a page. And so we could do that here. We could say view lookup dot add. And so the first thing we'll add is type of T page model. And we'll also register that as the key and then T page as the uh, value. So type of T page. And so that'll register it to our lookup table. And then we also need to register it to the container, the view model. And so this, uh, it's actually a page model. So this page model is going to have some dependencies in the constructor and we rely on our tiny IOC container to resolve those dependencies. And that's why we need to register these page models to the container. So we could just say container 
dot register and all we need to do is provide the type of um, the T page model and it doesn't have to be actual type but we can just say T page model and that'll do it so now we need to go ahead and register these pages and page models so we can head back up to our constructor and we can say register which is the method we just created and then we're gonna pass in the page model type so login page model for example and the page type so login page and we'll need to bring in pages and that'll register login page model to login page then we also want to do dashboard because we're going to use dashboard and we might as well do all the rest of them so go ahead and type all of your pages and page models and register them together okay and if you've registered all your pages and page models you should have something that looks like this and then i'm going to go ahead and just move login page model down uh, because i really like to have these alphabetical so i'm going to move it down below uh, dashboard page model and all the rest of these are alphabetical and what I kind of use as my key there is just the way they're listed in the folder because those are already by default listed alphabetically. And so now we have our pages and page models registered together. Before we get started on launching the app, we need to tell our app and Xamarin Forms where to actually start the app. And so we can do that by going to app.xaml.cs and we can get rid of the default main page equals new main page. And we're going to create an, an init navigation method. And so below the constructor, we can just say task, which uh, will be the return type. And we'll import system.threading.tasks and say init navigation. And all this will do is resolve the navigation service. So var nav service equals page model locator dot resolve and we can import the using statement and we're just going to resolve that navigation service and then we're simply going to return the navigate to login page so return nav service dot navigate to async and this will just be login page model and that'll take care of navigation and then we need to uh, handle this in the on start. So in on start, we will just uh, make this an asynchronous method. And inside of here, we could just say await init navigation. And now we can run our app to test to make sure it's working properly. Okay, and if you run your app, you should see something similar to the two pages I have up. The first one, you will have this login page. And when you tap the login button, it'll bring you to the dashboard page. And so this is proof that the setup that we did is complete and everything is working. And that just lays down the fundamental framework of how we're going to build this app. And starting next time, we can start doing the actual design work on the UI and start to create this actual time tracker app. So that'll do it for today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and we'll see you next time.